guys in this video we want to understand this terminology heat stroke so heat stroke is sitting here so what is this heat stroke if they ask you it is coming under hyperthermia that means your body uh, the controlling mechanism everything is um, not changed okay your body as such is not increasing your temperature it's not caused because of you or your internal regulation centers basically it is happening because of something external like a heat stroke so that is what is this hyperthermia under that only you have something called as heat stroke whenever they use this hyperpyrexia pyrexia is because of um, change in thermoregulatory center it is extreme fever okay fever which is very high that is hyperpyrexia fever in fever again there will be change in thermoregulatory center so did you understand now so fever there is change in thermoregulatory center is very high grade fever then it becomes hyperpyrexia hyperthermia heat stroke is a terminology used when the body's thermoregulatory center is fine except that the externally there is some causing factor or probably internal internally also there is some causing factor like some anesthetic etc or drug induced thyroid because of thyroid uh, hyperthyroidism pheochromocytoma because of some other causes that is hyperthermia in this we want to focus only on heat stroke okay this is environmental cause so we are looking at heat related illness okay in this video we are looking only at heat stroke so whenever you go to very hot condition what you do your body will try to acclimatize that means this is some kind of a temporary change it will try to do right it will try to um, sim stimulate sweat mechanism increased sweat so that it will try to cool your body down isn't it so adequate replacement with the salt and water they are suggesting because sodium etc so but they are saying only water intake you should avoid because you will lose uh, you know it will become dilution and hyponatremia so you should take salt and water okay then there are some terminologies that they are saying you know as the temperature increases beyond 37 they are saying first you will be heat exhausted then only you will get heat stroke so you can see the temperature i think this is 35 36 37 38 39 40 somewhere around 39 right 38 39 this heat stroke is coming when there is multiple organ failure confusion aggression shock oh my god this guy will be aggressive also multiple organ failure confusion aggression shock what are the things that can happen heat cramps can happen heat syncope you can just faint out right very similar to a vasovagal faint so anyways for the cramps they are saying rehydration will help that too you should give with rehydration salts okay not just water they are saying that very clearly then exhaustion we told you it is when um, it is um, 37 to 40 actually after 38 39 it's actually heat stroke right but anyways what are they saying prolonged exertion so you will be exhausted guys are you focusing so you will see that there will be dehydration and there will be elevation of mild urea sodium and hematocrit let's go with this there will be dehydration there is elevation of blood urea so what treatment you will give you will remove the patient from the heat environment then you will apply some cooling by some spraying fanning strip spray fan so strip the person of those clothes but maintain the dignity then spray and then fan nice right just to carry a nice cool spray when you are going to a hot location fluid losses you will replace with oral rehydration mixtures or intravenous isotonic saline isotonic saline okay so you can give uh, up to 5 liters of positive fluid 5 liters of fluid just like a burns case where they are giving so much fluid anyways uh, just a, a small thing that i said nothing okay now heat exhaustion may progress to heat stroke now comes heat stroke heat stroke when the body temperature rises above 40 degrees so specifically this is the definition of heat stroke when the core body temperature rises above 40 degrees um, then it is a life threatening condition we saw that here what and all will be there confusion aggression loss of consciousness something they told right about um, shock yeah this one shock and something else also they said go back and check organ failure multiple organ failure 
So this guy is hot and not sweating it seems. In heat stroke he won't sweat. Please highlight this. Not sweating. He is not sweating. See he is totally dehydrated. He is not sweating. In heat exhaustion he can sweat but in heat stroke he will not sweat. This is a life threatening situation above 40 degree but here they showed us uh, below 40. Anyways. The skin's patient feels very hot. Yes, of course, we will say sweating is absent. This is a very important point. There is failure of thermoregulatory mechanisms. <coughs> there is no change. That's what we read. But there is failure here. It is not even able to manage. Failure. What can it do if the temperature is so, so, so high? Okay. So everything else you will say will happen. Shock will happen, failure, organ failure, right? Hepatic and renal failure, pulmonary edema, cerebral edema. <clears throat> what I don't understand is this guy is dehydrated. That's what they said, right? Didn't they say the patient is dehydrated? Hypovolemic shock. But there is edema here in the brain and in the lung. Okay. What will you do here? You will cool the person, yes. You uh, Then you have to reduce the core temperature. So that's what they said, right? Oh, there also they said strips, spray, fan. But exactly here, what will you do? You will resuscitate. Okay. So you have to give crystalloids. Fluids you should give. But actually here, they are saying that uh, you should not give potassium containing. So you should not give Ringer lactate. You can give normal saline looks like. Okay. So crystalloids is normal saline, Ringer lactate. But you won't give Ringer lactate. Remember, you will give normal saline because Ringer lactate has potassium. Dextrose also you can give. Dextrose also is crystalloid only, right? Because this guy can have hypoglycemia. Okay. Then routine blood blood checkup and biochemistry you do. Okay. Just check how his uh, liver is functioning, how coagulation is happening, etc., etc. Then you can after managing an emergency you can put them in ICU and manage them. Okay. So basically this is an emergency because it is organ failure etc etc more than 40 degree temperature imagine right. Later they can have an onset of rhabdomyolysis, renal damage. So after treatment you have to still continue and check them <coughs> for these complications okay. Did you understand guys? So let's understand this uh, heat stroke. Basically because of excess heat, hyperthermia, the body temperature rises above 40 degree means it is heat stroke. This is life threatening condition. After heat exhaustion comes heat stroke remember. In this case there will be no sweating also. There is hot and no sweating. Often uh, sweating is absent. In heat exhaustion still sweating will be there. This is the next level where there is no sweating. So this person will have or multi-organ failure, confusion, aggression etc. And he'll have failure of thermoregulatory mechanism. He can just cannot uh, now anymore uh, regulate his body temperature. <clears throat> he'll have shock, hypovolemic shock. So that is why the treatment here is fluid, fluid, fluid. <clears throat> but though there is hypovolemia, he has edema. So it looks like everything went out of the bloodstream and it is gone here. Cerebral edema, pulmonary edema, he can have a lot of organ failure. Rhabdomyolysis he can have as a delayed uh, complication also they, they said, right? Then uh, you should, what treatment you will give? You will cool this person, you will resuscitate, uh, airway breathing, circulation, etc. You will remove him from that uh, scene. Uh, fluid resuscitation, you can give uh, saline, dextrose, all these you can give. But don't give um, ringer lactate because it has uh, potassium, okay? Then you will just do routine blood checkup everything. This is an emergency remember and then after emergency care move that person to ICU. Then you will uh, wait and just check if this guy is going into rhabdomyolysis, renal damage etc. And uh, uh, help the person okay. That's it for now. Bye bye.